stream and coming down and so I said, well, we want to save our, our flashlights. So I said, I'll swim across and you guys throw me that flashlight. And they threw me that flashlight and sliced this little thing. And that was the only thing and I didn't get a purple heart out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we got over the coconut grove and it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, so I said, when we were all, all pretty hungry, and so I, I found an old native canoe that was half full of water. So we drank out part of that water, and then we dumped it out. And I said, well, I'll go fishing. So I took that canoe out and tried to fish, and it couldn't catch anything. So I came back in, and they, they had coconut trees right on the beach. And I said, well, we can drink coconut. Green coconut is good to drink. So I climbed this coconut tree and I was up there and I all at once I was getting eaten up by a bunch of ants. <laughs> so I dropped all of these coconuts I could and shimmy down and jumped in the water and got rid of the ants. <laughs> and then that night we uh, there was an old um, native that uh, built a hut and all that was left was a foundation. So we slept there during the night, and I had one of the guys stay there as a guard. But we didn't know if the Japanese. And the only one we saw was a native boy that came in about dusk and looked us over, and he ran away. And that's the only thing we saw. And so then the next morning, we thought, I thought, well, we're supposed to I meet, uh, they had a flying Catalina flying boat on patrol to pick up survivors, and then they had a submarine to pick up survivors. So we, I said, well, we better build uh, a smoke signal. So we went out in the jungle, and picked up a bunch of brush, and we built and had a fire going. And then uh, about 11 o'clock, we saw this ship come around the corner, and it had a big rustling spot on it, and I said, oh, it's Japanese. So when our, our uh, engineer on board was named Van Gorder, and he took off in the jungle. He was afraid. And uh, so these, then they came around the point, and they couldn't come in because of the, the shallow water on the bay was only about three or four feet deep. So they, they put down this rubber raft and I looked out and I saw these white t-shirts and these white guys and I said, oh, it's the Navy. And so they came in and with a raft to pick us up. And uh, so they had these rafts and they could only take so many on their borders raft. So I said, well, I'll take that canoe and row out to the submarine. So I did, and we couldn't find Van Gorder. He was still in the jungle, and so uh, we hollered and hollered, and finally one of the guys went out there and found him. And he came in all scratched up, and they said, you better hurry and get on board that raft. So he got on board, and then the uh, Navy guy we called them Swabies, came out and took it, took it out to the submarine. And I took that canoe out there and I was going to let it go and one of the guys on board the submarine grabbed that thing and shoved it down the conning tower for a deep thing. <laughs> they were, their Swabies were great, great, huge souvenir hunters. And so they wanted that for a souvenir. So then we got on board and they said, where's the rest of the crew? And I said, they must be across the island, uh, the peninsula. So the submarine went around, picked us up, then went around the corner and found the rest of the guys. And they had a bail out on that side. And so they went down and stayed on the beach. And while they were on the beach, uh, just after they bailed out, a, a Catalina flying boat came over and dropped them some supplies and left a note saying that they'd be picked up later. 
So there was four or five of them on that side and five on this side. And I, we were one of the five on this where we went to the coconut grove. So the submarine went over there and picked those other guys up. And on board the submarine, there were four a, a, a aviator guys that were picked up by the submarine the day before. And they, I, I said, where's the rest of the crew? And they said, this is all that's left. They bailed out and they, they, the only thing that saved those four guys where they floated through a cloud and the Japanese couldn't see them anymore. So they landed in the water and the submarine came. They were in a raft for a while and the submarine picked them up. They couldn't and see then, them to shoot them in the, shoot them in their, yeah, while they they're in their, them, the in their parachutes. The Japanese shot them in their chutes while they were floating down. Which was something Killed both the Japanese the guys, and Germans like to do. Yeah. Anyway, so on board the submarine was uh, these other four guys, that's 10, that's 14 zoomies, we called them zoomies, and then there were zombies with native people. The, the submarine had shot up a trawler a few days before, and the natives, uh, the Japanese wouldn't surrender, so they killed themselves. But these the survivors of these uh, native guys they surrendered and the sub picked them up and there was six of those guys. And so they were on board the submarine, six of zombies, and uh, 14 of us zoomies, and then the swabbies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ever thought you were going to see the planes again? No. Ever thought you'd see these planes again? Well, Les Amundsen, we grew up in Sunnyside. When we moved to Sunnyside, my folks, we were in the ready mix business and they were in the furniture business. So I got to meet the Amundsen's then. And then uh, well, in 1949, I got married. And uh, I. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I remember your new bride. Yeah. And you got in a little trouble. We got you in trouble. We got you drunk. <laughs> I don't think so. I was pretty much a teetotaler. But uh, you, uh, the veterans were pretty wild bunch of them in Prosser. Well, and Sunny. Uh, you went a different direction than I did. I was in uh, Germany. I went down in Germany and up on the Baltic. And I, uh, it beat the hell out of my head, but you can't hurt a Norwegian by hitting him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but they captured me. And they just you were a POW then for a yeah, while. Yeah, I was a POW for a year and a half. And uh, it's a great place to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> he never had put on any weight since then. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I was in a, a, a month and with the family in Leeward and Holland. I, they hit me in a rafters, myself and, I, and my navigator. And then when they decided to move us out of Holland, the underground, I, I got picked up getting off a train on Amsterdam, so that set me up to the UW camp. prison camp at Barth on the Baltic and that damn cold in the winter. That plane in in Holland, and I, I just, I just missed a, a house and an old lady holding her apron and her mouth <laughs> through the door. And I hit right for her, and I dropped it 
just uh, there, uh, her, where her house was, and I stood up maybe about 30 feet, 40 feet, and right on the edge of a drain ditch. And I got out of that, and I got my crew out, and I said, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to sit here and just let them pick me up. So I said that you can, anybody can go with me that wants to, and if you don't want to, just stay here or what the hell I, but I'm not going to stick around here. And I took off and a couple of Dutchmen in the ditch that were running through a turnip field. They hit me in a barn and I was in that farm they'd feed me at night and then uh, I was at Leo Warden and then I so they, after the short no stuff I I started trying to move me to Belgium and they, I got but you can't hurt a Norwegian from hitting him in the head. He didn't know that. So then I was a POW for a year and a half up on the Baltic. That damn fool. And uh, when I got there, there was about 300 prisoners. Most of them are British. They had been there, some of them, three years. But when I left that camp... How were you treated when you were in the camp, by the way? We were 10,000 of us in that camp. Didn't hear me. All hungry. I, I, I don't think I weighed over 20, 120 pounds. That, that's about right. Yeah, I know that. And so. How were you uh, rescued? It's been a good life. I highly recommend anybody that doesn't know what he wants to do when he gets out of high school, get him service of some type. Because it is a good experience and you get good training. I never regretted anything I ever did in the service. I flew the B-17s until I got shot down. I was so full of holes that it wouldn't help there. <laughs> <laughs> so I bellied it in a little place in Holland. And uh, all, all the props were bent back, and I was right on the edge of a drain. Mm -hmm. The Dutchman hit me, and it was, it was a good life. I, 